five Radiant seconds remaining. Remain back. Ten seconds Dire remaining. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. No. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and with that, it's finally time for the second series of the day. I know we're a terribly, terribly tiny bit late in bringing it to you here, as you know, yeah, series number one ended up going to game number Ten three, and remaining. it was quite close. It ended up being two just back and forth games with the golden XP being an absolute roller coaster, whereas here, Nightshade Esports. One of the stronger teams in the tournament for sure. Amazing team bars and up with eventual spirit already making for a lot Ten of right click damage. Having that aura as back. well as the swap Ten. to kind of try and save people with. Then picked out side of team bars as their first pick. All right, so Chen is a little bit off meta. He has seen stronger days, but that remaining. doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the hero is weak, especially in the ca Five in the hands of a capable remaining. micro player. You can kind of reinforce two lanes at once with him, which you can't with the Enchantress. That's where he really has an advantage over the Enchantress and over most Enchantress players. Pangolier gets Radiant banned out, team. Magnus banned out, Tiny banned out as well. So we are back to the pretty much standard stuff that you see first phase banned or picked. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. The draft only really progressing slowly. Oh, Warlord has been banned out. We're not going to be seeing him again. Troll Ten absolutely terrifying remaining. if he amasses a sufficient attack speed. Five seconds remaining.
Warriors. Just what to pick up next. They got 95 seconds remaining. But yeah, Nightshade, a terrifying team to be drafting against. And I think they're trying to think ahead of their next pick. Because with these two picks in a row, Nightshade are going to have a huge ability to bring the draft back around. Twice today already we've seen the double pick be used as an opportunity to try and get a really greedy really carry combo online. Team Once pick. today it has worked. Radiant team pick. As Shadow Shaman gets picked up by the side of Team Bars, adding some much needed lockdown, adding good push as well. Ten I think Team Bars, they're gonna choose to take this into the hyper push direction with both a Chen and Five a Shadow Shaman remaining. to make for the maximum amount of tower siege and the maximum amount of damage you can get. Whereas Nightshade, what are they gonna synergize up with the, with the Vengeful? Vengeful is one of those heroes where the better you combo it with something, the stronger it gets. Nightshade. Radiant team pick. Dark Seer. Serve time quite quickly before settling on a on a Dark Seer, which we've seen one Dark Seer game where the Dark Seer was barely not enough, and another one where he did so much work. So Dark Seer, it's all opportunity. It's all Ten about that opportunist remain. gameplay. It's all about getting an opportunity to land in the vacuum plus five man five wall or even just like remain. three man vacuum wall is good enough. But three people is what you should be aiming for with your vacuum Dial wall. Team pick. Earth Shaker. seconds remaining five seconds remaining Nightshade, they got an Earthshaker to have those big Echo Sands for with the Dark Sea. I wonder if he's gonna go mid or not. I think so, right? Earthshaker support isn't really a thing. But revealing your mid hero third pick would be way too risky. But if he's not mid, as a support, the hero really isn't doing going too well. You can kind of run him as a greedy kind of offlaner, but Darkseer also fits in that role. And maybe Darkseer, Earthshaker offlane, if it's not a mid or if the mid doesn't work out for them anymore. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Slark. Ooh. And it looks like while well, the centaur was kind of basic to just go and deal with the aggro of the earth shaker, go and deal with the aggression that Darkseer can put into people's faces. They didn't choose a responsive remaining. and defensive hero for nothing. The Centaur War Runner, it made space Five for the Slark pick remaining. to come on out. It allowed Team Bars to get a very scary looking carry in Nightshade. With just the darks here, you're not gonna handle this, because making an illusion of the enemy hard carry is not gonna bother the enemy hard carry in the slightest. Radiant team battle. Huck. Dire team ban.
With that, a puck is picked up. Great for catching the slark, because it kind of prevents him from pouncing out of a team fight and just doing his own Five thing and running remaining. away with a game. Dire but other than catching back. the slark, this puck isn't going to accomplish all that much. You do one thing, yeah, you do it kind of well, but doing one thing kind of way, kind of well, be enough. I mean, the Earthshaker, he can run away Ten with the game now, and I like that that isn't the mid Earthshaker. That's what I really like about it. They third pick Five the Earthshaker, then they pick a puck. So it's gonna be Earthshaker, and I think Darkseer sharing the off lane with Vengeful in the safe lane, helping out whichever Radiant kind of carry Nightshade are now gonna pick. Radiant no mistake team. being made there, though playing against the Slark is still going to be absolutely terrifying. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Anti mage. Ooh, interesting last pick to try and deal with the Slark. I mean, he's kind of susceptible to getting pounced on. It's very high risk. I see where they're going. Like, I see where they're going for with, oh, we dream call you, we echo you, and then Ant Mage is gonna blink his shards at the survivors, and you never know who the real one is. But if this Anti Mage ends up feeding too much agility to Lil Plep, and Lil Plep on one, like, one of the most terrifying heroes if he snowballs. I can see Slark just take this. It depends on how the laning stage goes a lot, because Slark... You've got two ways of playing Slark. Either you go and farm creeps, or you go and hunt heroes. And this is the type of Slark that really wants to hunt for heroes, that really wants to get as many kills as possible. As for the Kunka pick, well, great synergy there, good team fight. You know, it's gonna mostly just protect other people, including Klaxon on that super tanky sand tower. And yeah, we're gonna see whether or not it can protect people from the Earthshaker with those huge echoes, because Kisco's game is looking. Ju Here, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy, fishy. Prepare for battle. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we are loaded. And Slark immediately gives the voice line as he realizes this game is still very much possible for Team Bars. They didn't get completely counted out. We just need to be careful of that Earthshaker. Anti Mage isn't the biggest issue. Ares, sure. In the late game, he can run away with the game by not just pushing lanes, but then all of a sudden having the real animate on a hero before anyone realizes it's the real one and not just an illusion. First, animate needs to scale up, needs to farm up. And there's a fissure from Kisco, who still ape the aggression. 30 seconds to battle. Earthshake, one of the hardest heroes to catch for first blood. Because, yeah, he skills the fissure and he can do that. And now he just goes back here. And guess what he's going to do with the fissure next? He's going to block some creeps. He's going to get some really advantageous lane equilibrium going. Mess up the enemy that way. The battle begins. We'll be getting traded two for two. 
brawls or further. Oh, thank <laughs> God. No, this is good for Ares. This means he can put his first skill point into the mana burn to just be as cancerous as possible in the laning stage, and Vengeful Spirit can synergize up with him. Oh, on the Earthshaker, he's already messed with Slark's lane and the creep equilibrium a ton. So, Darkseer should be able to just be super annoying with the Iron Shells against two fins off. Kind of. Well, Chen isn't a melee hero, but he kind of got the creep Darkest army going on. You can also killed. punish by just... Earthshaker, meanwhile, sneaking around, going for a deep D ward, but little does he know the super early advantage is over here. Well, maybe now he can guess it. Because there's only three points you put it, and at one of them there isn't one. Wait, what? Ares! Oh no! He got he got caught out of the tower. Oh, that's my bad. But that is not supposed to happen. Andy Mage isn't supposed to be dying this early on. So at level one he's super easy to kill, and I think kind of mind. Oh, Shadow Shaman plus Centaur. It is a very strong lane, don't get me wrong. This is like one of the most aggressive in your face lanes you can have. But I was expecting anti mage to just be sitting under the tower, kind of wait for level 2. Maybe, yeah, do that. Just burn centaur some mana. But it's not like he really cares. He can still harass the anti mage incredibly well while just sitting in the lane with zero mana. A lot of those double edges to come out into the anti mage. Didi having fun on the top lane yet. Over on bottom lane, Shadow Shaman has been position. Centaur just went ahead to stand in front of him, and any mage is completely blocked by a huge centaur. Can't really go, because the moment he goes, he knows full well he's gonna take a double edge to the face. He's gonna trade help with a centaur who's gonna regen his back twice as fast as him. <laughs> the greatest tragedy of our eons as fuck as I bet he missed the last hit or something. Oh, I bet he saw the rune from the Kunka <laughs> laning without a bottle. Knowing full well against the puck, you're not gonna get enough runes to justify purchasing a ball. Just purchase a few extra TP, scrolls, X marks, and spot yourself back to the base. It will be way quicker to reach up in the fountain than try and battle puck for runes. But knowing that the Kunka is also very focused on just farming, so Haze will be going out of the mid lane with a huge advantage in gold, kind of up to puck, <laughs> as it usually is in the more clutch puck games. To make up for that with a green coil catch with a bit of team fight synergy. Also, I just got word that our final series for today got cancelled. Sadly, Tony's five friends withdrew from the tournament. So, even if this one is gonna be another very long best of three to end up putting us into you no know, a bit of overtime here there is gonna be another series after this so let's hope it goes long let's hope the teams are gonna give it their all so i am kind of sad that that one is cancelled because at Tony's five friends, they may not be the best team, but I like teams that do some funky drafts that just pick signature heroes that aren't meta in the slightest. I always appreciate people that are ballsy enough to do that, and I'm kind of sad they withdrew. Arrow chasing with the other shock, but perfect healing from uh, Jeff Ricks keeps him alive in the meanwhile. As Team Bar is still trying to be as terrifying about this one as possible. Unfamiliar with this feeling? Is it joy? Puck still giving the funny little voice lines. I am unfamiliar with this feeling. False joy. Idolatry. Well, whether it's joy or not. I guess... Behold. Freeman is having... Orion? I'm not sure if the 4 is supposed to be pronounced as an A or not. 
looked up in his name. But one way or another, the puck is having a decent bit of a lane over on the mid lane. You might wish to retract your last move. Are yeah, now that puck is still pointed on the Kunka. I'm not so sure if he's trash talking. Vengeful Spirit, meanwhile, got caught by the Shackles level 2. Shadow Shaman, he held a point and put it in Shackles only, like nine, level 3 and a half. And ended up catching the Vengeful Spirit so hard as now Ares runs out. Not the bot lane anymore. Haze comes on in. His little clap didn't have most fun in the top lane, but hard now with the creep army already making it a hard out. Or Nightshade right now over in this top lane with a three kill lead, four kill lead, and Snark taking his first point of permanent agility, and much more importantly, getting a bit of gold and experience to be back on top of the network. Because Slark was the one carry who wasn't farming well. Puck is having an amazing mid lane, especially considering how hard Kunka is supposed to be against Radiant Puck with scared. a lot of physical damage, with a lot of the big hits. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That's Jeff Briggs on the bench for Renet again, double edge after double edge. But there is Ares to try and turn it around. Klaxon needs to be careful. That with that weight, the Kuntron suddenly do damage. And Slark, while that is going on, is just hitting Kisco for a bunch of stolen attributes. is bothering me. Sorry if my mic is making some weird noises. That's because my cat sometimes leaps at it and decides to attack it because she wants attention. I'm holding her and giving her attention. Suddenly it's not all right. That's over on top Codex though. Ooh, he's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Stark stealing attributes, but Lil Clap takes a little bit too much of the Urchin's face. still trying to keep a contained, but nope. Second point of agility. Lil Clap, 1 0 and 1. The Slark's still alive. And guess what? Over half a level, he's gonna be level 6. But then he's gonna start regening up so quickly that being a little bit low health right now isn't bad in the slightest. Besides, that Chen creep is still heating him actually. The one thing Stark needs in lane is heating until he reaches level 6. As long as you have, you have a babysitter sitting behind you until that ultimate is leveled up. I'm free man making sure to still run out of there on the puck. Radiance Courier has been Together killed. with the Stark looking to set up for more, they will find Kisco Kisco. Losing stat after stat, and Hardell will take the kill. Dex needs to be very careful. Six kill lead, however, and Team Bar looks like their good start to the tournament is gonna continue. This keeps up. Puck is trying to wrap around on a Shadow Shaman. Guess what? Shadow Shaman gets full heal. Reman takes a ton of damage from the centaur ult. Puck pokes the Shadow Shaman. Radiance possible, but will not get the kill. As Kunga finds the X marks on Vengeful with the haste. And boom, perfect chip follow up. Shadow Shaman just holding down the kill for haste. 7 to nothing. Lark gonna make it an 8 to nothing. We've seen one of these games before and it's a possibility in the current meta if a hero like Slark goes through or like Morphling as well, that's another hero who can be greedy while also being super aggressive. And if they go through and they're left uncontested, then games turn into this absolute trap show really quick. But now Nightshade, they have such a bad time getting anti mage any kind of a semblance of a battle fury time because he's jungling. He's already just trying to salvage whatever is possible from this game while Slark. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Second in that worth it only 10 minutes into the game. I say they need to pull themselves together. They need to wait for their level sixes and start team fighting. 
take some good uh, good smoke at like level six. But well, Vengeful Radiant shows herself. She's gonna get caught by a Shadow Shaman. She's gonna continue running after Death Rig. Torrent is off the mark, however, and with that, they're gonna back off after Shadow Shaman takes back the Observer. Nice little bit of supporting happening there. All the meanwhile, Chen just farming up uh, Vladimir's, making sure he gets as much life as possible for his feet. Caught off guard with a ship to the face, and boom goes the gunblade once again. Nightshade. Maybe it's the draft. Maybe it's, it's that far. Bars are kind of a strong team, but they're not measuring up in the slightest like this. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. They're being surrounded, plus perfectly X marked up by the Kunka. And with Shadow Shaman and the Creep from the Chen, he is just going to fall. Tier 1 tower, not long for this world. Fortification, what fortification, they ask. All the while, Central Warrunner is just chilling on the bottom lane, Radiant's trying to continue pulling Aris. And, well, Kunga has two supports behind him. Slark is also getting some solo XP. It's continuing to farm up. Interestingly enough, he doesn't want the early Diffuser Blade. I am a big fan of anyone who builds early Diffuser on the Slark, but instead he wants to spell with the Mage Slayer. To like do some spell damage and I mean it, it's gonna help his farm timing a lot but I think this is the type of game where now you want to farm heroes before this anti-mage still has a small chance of coming in the late game because that's really the only time they lose this unless they make any major mistake uh, the team bars they're not gonna make a single mistake they're gonna surround the anti-mage they're gonna kill off Ares making it look easy Chodex or Codex he's called Codex in the lobby his name is Chodex so I don't mean to diss him by saying that it's you know Itself, this that I just end up repeating on extra. But Earthshaker will be double killed by Hayes, anyways, and Hayes definitely just wants to own people right now. Fat Kunka, Fat Slark, Fat Centaur, even. And Puck, if he gets the bitch plate, at least he can do something. But no obsessed the Centaur with a stun double edge, and his first is still alive. Dream is gonna get double broken, which with the Venge getting a stun out will allow for one kill. Flex needs to be very careful, he barely does have the damage for guards here. But guess who does? Kunka. Kunga also has a beat ready if Vengeful Spirit isn't careful and that will be the double kill being secured by just hitting the creeps once before walking away. He is going to be fissured in this time, the torrent there big time, so this will be his life. Yeah. But even with three kills now for the side of Nightshade, Slark has won his lane over on top as well. All the towers are down as long as Slark can start joining his team soon. So the extra push and extra aggression from Bars isn't getting delayed too much. This is scary looking. Slark, trade with the anti-mage. Go and trade. You want attributes. Anti-mage, after you hit him four or five times, he's actually losing the trade as a Slark. I'm a Slark Sparrow. I'm very familiar with that, but it seems like a little flap. He thinks anti-mage is somebody sitting behind him, otherwise he would be way more eager to trade with the anti-mage. Sure, it's gonna cost him his mana, but he's gotta stick to at least press an ultimate in emergency. Vengeful spirit as well. The clock will be running down the Chen, and Chen with his whole creep army gets caught out of position, however, in comes from behind a Shadow Shaman with an ultimate, a follow-up Kunga ship. Earthshaker managed to get himself out, but he got out straight into the Slark as Jeff. Jeffrix is already down, Kisco will not be long for this world. Taken by Lil Flap, Lil Flap, five points of permanent agility. Could be a lot better, but guess what? He has a hand of Midas. So this Slark, he's going full hunt people mode. Trying to benefit off of his permanent scaling. Interesting choice here. I mean, Lil Plep, he's now going for the Diffuser Blade, so I actually approve of this build. I think a Diffuser Blade on Slark is amazing, because you reduce people's max mana while also burning mana. Making it Radiant effective without illusions. He's the one hero, it's kind of effective on without illusions for that attack. reason. And as for the anti-mage Ares, 15 Radiant minute battle fury timing, not that gonna be it, it's gonna be more like 17 or 18 minute battle fury timing. So I'm starting to think this game is already lost because anti-mage has been killed one too many times to have a good game anymore. Gets dumped on by the puck. My 
thrift rewarded. Are kind of isolated. He does have an ultimate, however, and in comes the Kunga to instead of try and help his Slark catch the animate. Animate, he gets caught. Follow up torrent. The swap comes in just in time from the Vengeful Spirit. Will be saving her teammate, even if she ends up sacrificing one point of agility to the Slark. As Slark buys some D-Words of his own to help his team with the vision and Kisco over on the mid lane did get killed by the Shadow Shaman dropping an ultimate on top of the set. Darcy already walled, so Chen with the creep army will take his life for that. Slark won't find a bonus kill. But it's really happy with this mid aggression, especially as Tuck gets caught, gets Shadow Shaman sent on her wall on her sitting on top of him. Oh man! Nightshade, they actually can't deal with the Shadow Shaman. I didn't expect they would be saying it, but Shadow Shaman MVP from the looks of it. Great play from Team Bars, who Radiance are continuing to keep up the attack. aggression, continue to shove out lanes with the Slark. And he made caught up guard, and one more right kick from Hayes is gonna do the trick. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Her shaker. Stomp killed off, and with the torrent, you will easily be isolated. Over on the bottom lane, the tier 2 tower Radiant's is crumbling. Find your belly and crawl! Caught by the Slark, and once the Slark catches you, he's not gonna let go. Slark's here still trying to get away with the Surge, but they decide to use the Center War on an ultimate for him, kill him off. And over on the mid lane, Center War on a little be killed off, but just a little bit too late, Slark comes in, kills the Vengeful Spirit pretty much for free. Speed ends up a little bit of help again as Lil Plebs. Still looking scary and in comes the Kunka to back him up. Gets the D ward as Slark continuing to chase. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Puck, get out of there, buddy. He does manage to escape the ship. And he made. He can't really split push anywhere for too long anymore. Hunting 17,000 gold lead, almost 1,000 gold a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry, chat, but I did tell you Nightshade didn't really succeed in addressing that Slark. And as they failed to address the Slark, they now got to deal with this really big raid boss and missing more than a point of armor already. Radiant are scanning. will be caught once again, oh no! Antimate ends, uh, Antimate ends up donating a third point of agility to the Slark. So even the Antimate is missing three points of attack speed, three points of damage that he's just given to the Slark from Lil Flap. It's getting even stronger by the minute. God, I love this hero so much. Hyper Agro Draft from Team Bars. Pushing and I I knew team bars were strong. I was happy that team bars were one of the teams that were gonna give Nightshade were also a really strong team a run for their money. But I didn't expect Nightshade to just get overwhelmed even with a slightly disadvantageous draft. Just because the Slark isn't addressed doesn't mean he can usually run over the map this 3D and that's an unstoppable Lil Plep, Lil Plep Slark looking to push high grounds, looking to push the mid lane as well at this point. Whereas Antimate, 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes and no Battle Fury. This is how he shut down Antimate, ladies and gentlemen. Take his tier 2s before he got Battle Fury. If you take all of Antimate's tier 2s before he has a Battle Fury, there is no chance in hell he's gonna win the game. And Shadow Shaman literally solo kills a Puck with his ultimate. Dyer's As Puck pings out, yeah, they have vision here, yeah. They have vision freaking everywhere. Even the Slark is playing an additional support, sometimes just buying wards to help his team out. All the while, Kunka 
Yeah, an absolute beast for the team fights, and only the mid tier two tower remains standing as Chen. Look at this huge army of creeps right clicking for 100 damage each. It's ridiculous. The Scanningtons are coming in, their Salmoners are coming in for like 100 and something right click damage with 12 stacks of rallied. Oh god, the catapult gets the rally too, so yeah. Radiance middle Say goodbye to your fallen. tier 2, and this army has now got to proceed to pressure tier 3, while the real Chen continues to join his team over on top lane, where they're hunting for an anti-mage, and with the X mark, they're gonna easily get the anti-mage, as Lil Plap. Oh no, oh no, the anti-mage into Slark pick, with a Kunkka last pick, gets punished so much. I told you, Kunka is a solid last pick, all he needs to do is protect the Slark, while Slark is doing his damage, and well, Kunka, not only has he always gone for the defensive ships whenever his teammates needed them, he also found himself a ton of kills, found a ton of assists by just setting up kills for the Slark. And both of them are really happy with the, ga with the way the game is going right now. Slark got the full-blown Aghanim Scepter coming in, so I think this game is gonna be over at 20 in 20 minutes at this rate. I was hoping for the Earthshake to make big plays with Kisco. Well, he's a support and he doesn't even get to make a blink dagger happen to try and land the Echo Slams. This is rough, this is really rough. I think the, cooper the cooperation between Nightshade and discussing how much farm everybody needs for the next item was also re really bad. Because if your anti is this far behind you, like send two supports with him to farm. Just seek and farm safely. But a 21 minute, 22 minute battle fury time is unacceptable in every scenario. I feel kind of sorry for them. I do like watching Slark just do Slark stuff though. Radiant and maybe with the darks here coming Dark online, there's still scan. a chance of comeback. One from Team Bars is running and rallying up around the road pit. Again, isn't gonna catch anybody. Yeah. GG gets called as Lil Clep keeps looking for bonus kills, won't find them, but it doesn't matter. Nightshade. Dire victory. I don't know. I mean, I get where they were coming from. They were like, oh yeah, we get an anti-mage and we get to create so much chaos. But at least make the Earthshaker a core or allow him to farm a blink dagger if he's not a core. Like, if you gotta support Earthshaker, fair enough. But if, I don't know. I don't know, I think the team coordination was just horrible. If they would have put Earthshaker and Venge on top of the Anti-Mage while Anti-Mage farms the Battle Fury, then would have like given Earthshaker the farm for his Blink Dagger. Maybe they could have had those two core items by the 23 minute mark at least. No Battle Fury timing on the Anti-Mage whatsoever and a Slark who's just been unchecked in the laning stage.
Five seconds. Radiant main team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds, radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining, dire team ban. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the potentially last game already. As yeah, Nightshade Esports in game number one, they just get obliterated. Happens to the best of them, but man, oh man, there is such a thing. Dire team ban. Too much damage. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five Other seconds than that, remaining. Bands here are looking pretty normal. I like the Chen getting banned out, so they do respect the powers of the Chen. We'll make sure that if they're not picking it themselves, we'll be. At eSports, their Meepo got banned, making sure all the good Meepo players will never get that hero ever. Very important in the current patch, if you don't, make sure to ban out that Meepo to take away such a core part of what makes a lot of teams strong. Radiant team pick. Punish Dire you. team pick. Dragon Knight. Ooh, Dragon Knight coming out. Radiant On the side of Nightshade to start things off with. Hello, Demon. The bite bars. Ten seconds In part remaining. because of the block pick, for sure. I think they're thinking, okay, we can't allow Dragon Knight to go Five through with Shadow Demon, because then you make those really powerful Dragon Knight illusions that start split pushing and start continuously melting towers even more. Radiant Team Ban. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. I'm around the Slark. It's gonna be banned out Nightshade. They want to make sure one of those most aggressive carries in the current patch will be taken out. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining.
Dire Team Pick. Radiant Team Pick. We hold the Horn of Magnus. With a roar, with a trample, there he is. It's the Magnus once again. Lots of team fight. A staple of the current patch that gets banned out a lot. Because being a universal hero allows him to do so Ten much damage. But he's also farming a great deal and just extremely beefy. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Venom Magic. Esports after long hesitation. Ooh, they pick up something we don't see every day, but it's a Venom Answer. And Venom Answer, he doesn't live long, but his ultimate deals such an incredible amount of percentage based damage. Ten it seconds is remaining. Absolutely broken. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. As the Shadow Shaman get picked up by the side of Nightshade Eastboard. Ten seconds remaining. I mean, Shadow Shaman did do a huge Five amount of work for Team remaining. Bears last game around, but the thing is, you can always jump the Magnus into a line to kind of drag the Shadow Shaman out of position and punish him that way. Also, ladies and gentlemen, let me just take this opportunity to remind you all that the last series of the day has been cancelled. Tony's five friends have officially withdrawn from the tournament. Dire team pick. Mirana. Rana Ten comes out from remaining. the side of Team Bars. A lot of good setup, a lot of good catch. Shadow Demon and Mirana combo remaining. is definitely terrifying. Magnus plus Mirana can also set up some of those harder arrows. And skewering somebody into the arrow is always a great little combo. Radiant team pick. Wind Ranger at your service. It's gonna be a Wind Ranger picked up 14 bars after a long time of hesitation. But I guess with the Wind Ranger stun, with that shackle, you can pin somebody to a tree, punish them with a Mirana arrow, punish them Ten by absolutely just stacking the damage on Radiant them. Nightshade. Faceless Void. Okay, okay, I like it, I like it. This is gonna add a lot of late game. So if they just hold on long enough, if they don't lose this game for the next three hours, then they are pretty much gonna automatically win this by default. That's just the nature of this draft. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire 
Dire Team Ban. Last band, anti mage. Yeah, against Faceless Void, you cannot get away with laning against or playing against an anti mage. He is gonna burn all of your mana. The Stark has also already been banned out, so I wonder how Ten seconds bars remaining. are actually gonna try to deal with the Void. There isn't a lot of hard carries that out Five carry the Void remaining. that hard that are great this meta. Troll Warlord is a possibility. Isn't Radiant too bad with Magnus. Ban. Gonna be the Mars banned out by the side of Team Bars. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Dire Warfling. team. Pick. Admiral Kunka. Taken away as the Kunka comes out and offers a lot of AoE, but more importantly, those huge defensive ships to try and keep the faces white, try and keep the Venomancer and Shadow Shaman alive mostly. Because, yeah, Dragon Knight, he's Ten able to tank through everything. Remaining. He's a Dragon Knight. He's. Five seconds remaining. Choose your hero. As last pick comes out for Team Bars. Okay, so Team Bars, they're basically saying, you know what, we can 2 0 stomp these guys easy. Because you don't pick Haze if you're if you're expecting this game to go on to the late game. On the contrary, they pick the Keeper of the Light so they can end this game before the Faces Void comes online. And man, I think that's kind of high risk. But Lil Pleb will be taking the Wind Ranger in the one position. Also, fittingly enough, guess what? The Shadow Demon player is gonna be named Arrow, because he is gonna be enabling all of those Mirana arrows throughout the game, or at least he hopes so. That is the idea of the draft. And ladies and gentlemen, there is the load-in. Prepare for battle. My camera is now also cooperating. <laughs> it always needs a second after people go for that zero minute smoke. And of course, zero minute smoke is quite popular in the current patch. No zero minute smoke or smoke at all attempted from the side of Team Bars. Instead, Team Bars, they are just charging in, looking for an opportunity to start a brawl. Don't see anyone yet, but the smoke gets broken by the Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger runs behind those trees, but they haven't seen more heroes on the side of Nightshade yet. Now Nightshade realizes everybody is here and they need to tread carefully. We'll get the D ward for that though. though. So Team Nightshade already get a little bit of gold and a D ward to swing their way. To battle. No Shaman and Venomans are waiting around for somebody to potentially step out of position. Hard L, so close. The battle it looks begins. like Team Bars instead just worried about the runes. 
They're gonna be three to two for two. That nightshade. A lot of a better start than the last game. They made sure to get a little bit of a zero minute advantage going. Klaxon, he's standing here just to try and mess with Ares' crease, but really who wants to mess with it's Ares, and out comes the Shadow Demon to help him do that, as Magnus, casually walking with the creep wave, Arrow needs to be careful against the Venomancer, lots of movement slow and lots of bad bad damage as you get caught out of out of position as well, Ares, healing just fine with the Magnus' harass. Venomancer misses the Gale, and with that Gale being missed, look at how much harass they're taking all of a sudden. Faces Void will be able to time walk off most of it, but he is definitely not having fun in lane, especially not against the constant shadow demon harass with his own illusions. And this time around he can't time walk off the damage, this time around the damage sticks too, so there's a reason why Magnus is banned so often. And it's funny that Faces Void, the hero who wins every game if the game goes late enough, is being forced to lane against that super cancerous... I don't know, Magnus, whereas Hardal... It looks like Venomance over on bottom got caught with the skewer, got skewered out of position. Leading to a first blood. Well, Kisco was looking for a similar opportunity on the top lane, but all things considered, Windranger is farming really well and Faces White is not. Actually, Ares is ahead of CS over the Windranger still. Also, they will be killing off Arrow here, who's just slow to Oblivion and one more right kick. Plus, the face of fight is going to do the trick, forcing Claxon to play as well. Magnus, he needs to be careful because Venomance right on top of Claxon. It's just going to right kick him down easily. Death is the. Filmony having time of his life on that Venomancer, making sure the bottom lane is going to be one. Codex, the turn on the Mirana, if you get the Mirana out with that, it would be devastating. Codex wanted to pull the creep wave, gets stunned out of position though, doesn't get the creeps to follow him like he wants this, that he will be shot down from long range with Mint, Wind Ranger and Mirana just having too much freaking damage on the lane. Shadow Shaman, do you really want to stand there? Now two of these range heroes are gonna run at him. Kisco, harass down to half health, he's eating a tango, will be fine. Radiant structures are fortified. Though, yeah, as you can see, this safe lane from Team Bars is actually super aggressive. It is very much in your face and just right taking people down. As for Arrow, he now stands a lot more of a chance up against Phil Mini. So he's gonna try to outbrawl the Venomans at one more shadow point. He's gonna do the trick. Bam! Beautiful combo by Arrow. Even if he dies for this, it's gonna be okay. But even better if he doesn't die to the faces void for this. So he will get to steal the rune and get away with that. Whereas Mirana has died over on top because this time around the torrent wasn't a miss. So the kills are equaled out again for the side of Nightshade and Nightshade with their Dragonite Creep farming. They actually take the lead in gold right back in their favor. It won't last for long, this gold lead, they need to use it while they can, because Magnus is gonna pull ahead again, having the cleave built in, having just so many farm <laughs> Step lively now, your admiral is on board. Suffering, but not in too much trouble just yet. <laughs> Radiant's courier has been killed. Nice arrow is Radiant's going to save Lil Plus life. Leave the wind range extremely low, though.
All right, fair enough. There's a healing salt, and Lopez is just going to restore everything up. Meanwhile, Philmany went for a one-man smoke to try and gank Haze, but guess what? Haze is farming the other half of the map and couldn't care less. He's grabbing himself a big stack, making sure he gets that early game timing because his team is counting on the Keeper of the Night to come online really early on. Over on top lane, a bit of a brawl happening, but Shadow Charm once again just gets Mirada perfectly and Kisco, one more right click is gonna do the trick. Nope, as he's healing salt, but power shot will from Lil Clap. Oh, that cost him 100 gold extra for that healing salt and he didn't get away. That is the worst case scenario and it feels so salty if you're that support. I've been there, trust me. We all know that support life sometimes, but man, oh man, is that unlucky. Because Wind Ranger, she's waiting for the timing where they can go like last game and just run all over the side of Nightshade without any concern for Nightshade and what kind of things they have to threaten with. But right now, there isn't a Chronosphere. Everybody is a little under leveled on the Radiant side. But give it 10 or so minutes and the Faces Void will actually be able to set up huge ultimates. With Venomance, you're not going to be lacking on damage to follow up the Chronosphere. Panzer already starting to harass Klaxon a little bit. Being a general nuisance wherever he can. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And there's gonna be the Shadow Shaman coming in as well, looking for the Shadow Demon. Shadow versus Shadow matchup, but guess what? Shadow Shaman instead gets screwed out of position away from his teammates. Face is right, taken off the map. Arrow continuing to fight, and speaking of arrows, Mirana lands a perfect one on Ares. Ares forced to time walk out. Shadow Demon traded for the Shadow Shaman, but it will be a bonus kill as Venomancer goes on down, and Team Bars once again managed to take themselves a lead. Because more importantly, while well, all of this is happening, Wind Ranger is just slowly but surely free farming. Lil Pleb starting to get a bit of an item timing going. As Kunka threatens the ultimate with the level 6 and forces the Wind Ranger to play this very carefully. Guard, arrow still in life, nice combo there with the long range Mirana setup. Though the Mirana arrows alone aren't doing the work that team bars need from them just yet, so Nightshade can continue to free farm up. Especially Ares is very happy with the amount of space he's currently getting. And Arrow will, however, hit the Shadow Shaman, a blood grenade to follow it up. Shadow Shaman. You sure about trying to go for this Mirana? Well, he seemingly is because he got some teammates coming in and the arrow illusions will right click down Shadow Shaman. This is the power of the Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, Philmany. The pain! Yeah, instantly deleted from Hayes, who has a good old time. Just poop and you're gone. Of course, hey, it needs to keep making those kills. He's a super moment. But Faces Void can just one man crone the Keeper of the Light, kill off the Keeper of the Light, and take him away. It is scary going into the late game with this. Roman, he comes in over to the bottom lane. Actually, deals a ton of harass to Klaxon. Radiant structures are fortified. Gonna get follow up slowed by the faceless void, but other than being slowed out of the lane, nothing's really happening to him. Whereas on the mid lane, Dragon Knight dropping super low health, being affected by his own corrosive breath. He has to run, but he will not make it out. Shadow Demon, MVP, arrow just forcing the aggression. However, his Miran has died, so there is no 5 second follow up arrow this time around. Shadow Poison still being stacked out, and Kisco, the lead with the Keeper of the Light, and the Shadow Demon. 
as they reveal their combo. There's the one-man Kronos, he to keep up the line, followed up with a perfect chip from the Kunga. And with that Kunga chip, I think that Mars are realizing, hey, we can't really burst people down anymore. Nice save on the win. Ranger, power shot off the mark for the Kunka. In comes the Mirana arrow, a little bit late, but they will end up finding Filmini. So much burst damage, Nightshade, base created for Ares, Ares getting out, going 2-0-1. Already looking a lot more solid, and as you can see, the gold still favors Team Bars. They are still advancing at a decent rate, but there is little team fights where Nightshade gets just a little bit more. They would pull the game back, as I say that. Codex gets killed off absolutely for free by Lil Pleb. He's gonna be super happy with that extra kill on his win screen. Keep up the light, heads up Kisco for death and Kisco, he will be falling, keep up the light running out of there, has a Mirana ultimate, decides, you know what, if the Void is gonna leave me alone, because I have a Mirana ultimate, we may as well turn around onto Ares, and Ares running for his life, but can he run away from a Magnus, he's getting his cooldowns refreshed by the keep up the light, nope, he cannot, or can he, nope, I don't think so, I mean, Void is still alive, and he has another time walk, he actually gets out thanks to the Kunka ship, holy crap! He's now gonna be super hangover and take a bunch of damage to face Void. He really needs to get out of there, but he's still kiting the Magnus around. With a 2k gold lead, holy crap, what an escape! Ares just jumping all over the place. Magnus will be teleporting out, did get scanned though. Skillshot from the Mirana onto Ares. Ares is gonna be able to walk off most of the damage, but... This is a reminder to him that he can't just farm a lane and think he's safe, because next time around there may be a Shadow Demon next to that Mirana with enough damage to kill you off. Or a Magnus with a super. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> But tier 1 will be annihilated and Shadow Shaman shutting out the top of the tower as well as best he can. Weird <laughs> Ranger just wants to slowly snipe the Shadow Shaman ult with a set of teeth. Oh, I'm X marked up. Try to use that as an opportunity to kill up Kisco and one more right click. Yeah, Haze will actually be the one securing that one. But guess what? Kunka locked down by the Shadow Demon, kept in the area for more. As Team Bars, they seem to be just a little bit too well coordinated for Nightshade to take down. This Nightshade, this time around they got far more solid draft. They were playing it really well on the individual lanes in the laning stage. But now that the laning stage is over, they're looking to struggle a lot. They're not expecting this. Hayes is over on the mid lane just trying to combo up a Dragonite. He's acting like he's solo, but now with the Dragon with the Mirana ultimate being shown on the Keeper of the Light. The Dragonite knows there is more coming in, and yes, indeed, because it's a two-man RP. Plexum deals a lot of damage to his teammates with the Venomance ultimate cropping from him before finally going down himself. The Chronosphere, though, off the mark with the leap. Hayes running for his life. Hayes killed off. Arrow needs to run out of there, but an arrow from the Wind Ranger is going to protect him. It's funny, Team Bar, they really seem to like arrows. They got a guy named Arrow, they got Wind Ranger with the power shot, and they got the Mirana arrow. And while that wasn't the greatest of all trades, it was kind of even actually really favoring Nightshade because of just how far bars are ahead by this point. Well, it means no Chrono for two minutes, and that means two minutes where Team Bar can just run at any opening they can find. So I think they should try to be more aggressive while the Chronosphere is on cooldown, because the Chronosphere is the reason why the enemy team has been free pushing and has been having such a good time with the laning stage so far. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. 
comes the Keeper of the Light as well. All the while, Magnus looking to hunt. Radiant are scanning. Bounty room. Up by the Magnus. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Scanning. Shadow Demon gets a cat over on the mid lane. The follow up arrow, but instead of the arrow, it's gonna be a follow up Magnus Gewitch. Well, goodbye, Dragon Knight. He's going to get right back home as his mid tier one tower crumbles. 3,000 gold Radiant's lead, Lil Clap still hunting, he knows Wind Raider isn't the best late game hero, so he's just trying to get more objectives done. And Shadow Shaman throw down an ultimate as he's looking to at least get himself a lens and finish this stack, but guess what, Magnus is gonna be there. Ooh, actually, one of those almost went to the Shadow Shaman still. So, but yeah, the jungle completely taken over by the side of Bar at the end. And... That's the kind of thing, as long as the face of white doesn't have a chronosphere, nobody on the side of Keen Bar is scared for their life. Chronosphere is now available again, so with a Venomance or Ultimate, they're gonna catch a Wind Ranger. But do you really want to catch Lil Pleb is the next question. Is this Wind Ranger absolutely powerful? Will Wind run in again? Look for the Faces Void, set up the Faces Void with a nice stun follow up stun from the Mirana. Faces Void just deleted without the Faces Void, even with the Chronosphere available. Nightshade, they need to be careful fighting this as Shadow Demon will be taken down instantly by spec though. Realizes, hey, we can just try to stop before Keeper of the Light falls up. Keeper of the Light, he has no thought of falling off as Codex. Bam! Perfectly obliterated with a power shot from Lil Plap. Secure the kill. Phil Mini get, does he get scattered out of time? Nope, not quite. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Nice escape there at least from the side of Nightshade. But Don't they are spend. being torn apart once again after that absolute stomp in game number one. It seems like they just don't have enough resources to catch up in game number two. Because, yeah, if the Void is late game, they stand a chance, but guess how long that is going to be? It is going to be a long, long while, I can tell you that much, as the Shadow the shadow Shaman scouts out the stack, but he dies for it. And now Team Bar go, oh, wait, right, we still have a huge stack in our jungle. We can still farm up another 10,000 gold. And they're gonna give it all to Lil Pleb to make Lil Pleb an even more of a gold lead. Keep on the take some as well. This is gonna be Lil Pleb almost having an ultimate orb. Being even tankier, hitting even harder. Three people smoke up on the mid lane with a Dragon Knight. They have good damage to follow up the Shadow Shaman Shackles, but Shackles with good damage is beginning Dragon Knight. He will be jumping onto the Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger just obliterated. Out comes the Mirana arrow, but connecting onto nobody. Good turnaround pickup for the side of Nightshade, even though it is only a pickup. Radiant are scanning. And the mid tier one tower gets attacked by the Dragon Knight as now that infinite but slow push from the Dragon Knight is gonna add up. It's gonna keep pressuring Bar's objectives. Out of Wind Ranger, they don't have a good answer for it. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Stay silent and move quickly. Void teleports top just as there is four people. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. King Mirana opens it up. Out comes the Shadow Demon. Ooh, even with the skewer. Follow up arrow did miss. Void almost time walk off the damage, but they made sure to interrupt it still. Kodak, are you sure about this? He's got a blade mail, but keep up the line. Got a BKB. and says, I got a BKB. I don't have to care for your blade mail. Codex, one more burst from Keeper of the Light is gonna do the trick and he will be caught by it. Mirana goes down for that as Dragon Knight got at least one. 
But Magnus tries to initiate once more. Magnus instead getting turned around. A nice save by the Shadow Demon. Punishes them with a bit more poison as well. No catch from the Magnus though. And while that is happening, Lil Plep just chilling over on the bottom lane. Slowly farming up for his Lincoln Sphere still. Is pinging to group up around the Roshan. Could be Team Bar or Lucid for our next. Though so Klaxon caught out and he will blink away to the high ground and then just skewer. What an escape! Now in comes the Shadow Demon, signing up for more part with the Keeper of the Light first. It's gonna be a forced teleportation. Ooh, so close. Dragon Knight, he actually still died there. Just got the lead and that leaves Kisco absolutely annihilated. Two for nothing once again for the side of Team Bars. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Eight esports all of a sudden starting to struggle. <laughs> Bars still need to make sure they continue pushing and they continue going for objectives, which is kind of difficult as you can see. With defensive positioning from everyone on Nightshade's side still, and more importantly, that all important Chronosphere being up, because if you land on three people or more, Chronosphere can still be an amazing resource, even if you're 9,000 behind. Although Klaxon also amazingly rich and fat. Three horns on which to hoist them. Magnus jumping forward finds the skewer on the Shadow Shaman and instantly there's a Shadow Demon next to him. Haze will in fact take that kill. Well done, mega kill streak for Haze. With the Keeper of the Light, you've got to make sure you keep killing people, otherwise the hero is very prone to falling off. But speaking of killing people, Lil Pleb, once he gets that Lincoln Sphere, can be a lot more aggressive and can, can try to be that tempo carry that Wind Ranger is known for. Whereas Mirana, over on the bottom lane, tries to set up for Kunka kill. Kunka, Invis, teleporting out, will get his teleport interrupted, and that leaves Kodak. Entirely out of position, he gets a nice ship, but Mirana manages to dodge through the lead still. As Kodak trying to run, but running from the Keeper of the Light is not allowed. All that's allowed is damage. Takes them a while to bring down the Kunga, but they find the most valuable kill on the map, and with that, the Roshan is now open for business. Wind Ranger dealing in tons of damage. Doesn't mind tanking it either during the wind run. So, 4,000 more help on the Roshan. Do like absolute soft butter with a hot knife. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Fortune's chain. And there is the four-man smoke up from the side of bars. My cat just knocked over my glass. Thankfully it was empty, otherwise I would have... Dyer's top tower is under attack. I'm really worried now. That little cat bastard comes up on me. Try and distract me while casting. It's like her favorite pastime. All the while, Wind Ranger's favorite pastime is hunting for free kills. Now that the Lincoln Sphere is done, guess what? It's gonna be Kisco. Killed off first by Arrow and the Wind Ranger, who are gonna be very happy with that one. Even though it's just a support, it's a support who takes away a huge long cooldown ultimate as the Shadow Shaman wards. They're a huge factor of the team fight, right? The physical damage component from the wards cannot be ignored. Ooh, the skewer so won't quite be into the arrow, but the skewer will be into his death as Ares on the boy trying to get out, trying to stay careful. But guess what? Dragonite, he is getting turned into a pincushion by the Wind Ranger. 
And with the Dragonite Kelda, they will go on a pace this void. We try to time walk out. Has a Chronosphere still available? Everything as the two man Kuka combo comes in, but nobody is dead yet. Lil Clef, the lowest health, who still has an Aegis Texan, however, he does not, so the Magnus will be killed up just before the heal from the Keeper of the Night can come and save him. That's one turnaround kill for Nightshade. Not bad. See for how far they're behind. They're hiding amazingly well. But it may be a little too late to start doing well now as Filmini barely escapes with his life intact, but the Shadow Demon does not. And no, never mind for that. Blind power shot. Why not? <laughs> Wind Ranger still just having the time of her life. Still Pleb running up to the top lane, looking for another free kill onto Ares. Ares, no chronosphere, and a lot of gold to his name. Makes for the perfect gank, right? So he will be taken off the map. Shadow Demon makes some illusions of him. Ares still running. Wind Ranger trying to catch up to him. Goes for the power shot. But that they're just gonna settle for the top tier one tower from the looks of it. We'll be getting that as the Keeper of the Lights grab full lead is gonna snowball even more into 13,000. Dyer are scanning. Catch onto two people. Nice banishment on the Dragonite. It will not quite set up the perfect Mirana arrow, however, allowing Faces Void to try and turn around. But there's the Torrent Storm as a follow up. God, Faces Void has to go before the Kunga every time. But then when the Kunga helps his body out, man oh man, can Void slam that damage down. Klaxon will try to kill up Filmini. Filmini will die for that. Nice skewer from Klaxon with the Mirana ultimate. Isn't safe from the Shadow Shaman still. But in comes the Wind Ranger, and Wind Ranger wants the Kunga, will get the Kunga, will get the follow up kill on the Shadow Shaman with ease. Of how much damage Lil Flap has? Lil Flap with the Wind Run wants another one, he can get another one. Thanks to the Keeper of the Night healing him up. Rampage! Double kill for the Dragon Knight as well who managed to assassinate another one. Die. But Lil Pleb, he says, what? Somebody wants to feed me a second rampage? I love the idea of that. Two seconds left on the wind run, but it seems like he won't pursue. All right, good escape. That was surprisingly close. Wind Ranger, 30 seconds on the Aegis, so this regen, regen rune seems a little bit superfluous as bottom is the next objective they want to push for, it seems. Claxton still saving up for the BKB, but with the Harpoon plus the Dagger, he already got a huge, terrifying combo for catching out the fact. Faceless Void, whenever he's not paying attention, Mirana in the meanwhile, going for that Guardian Grief into Lotus Sword build, which has proven itself time and time again. All the while, look at where the Wind Ranger is casually walking, absolutely unafraid. Lil Pleb, level 21 already, and with that Lincoln's Fear, even the big spells that would kind of counter a Wind Ranger don't apply to him anymore. Codex in the jungle, he will be caught by the Wind Ranger and out comes the focus fire. Make short work of him. Late mail, sure, it did do a good amount of return damage, but just return damage isn't gonna save you from this fat of a Wind Ranger. Dragon Knight trying to split push out, isn't gonna show just yet. Dragon Knight will be blinking back, but there is the Magnus on top of him. This is kind of what I've been waiting for. The skewer setup as Dragon Knight gets caught, gets caught back even further, and Wind Ranger with right pick after right pick is gonna end his existence. Shadow Shaman went for a split push ultimate, but guess what? Even if you get the tier one tower and some much needed space across the map for your team, Wind Ranger, just too terrifying. We'll take the Shadow Shaman kill for that. Magnus, in the meantime, pushing in the mid lane. 
And yeah, they're gonna look for Rex soon. Because if this game goes on to the 40, 50 minute mark, that's when the Faces Void becomes really terrifying. Until then though, Wind Ranger got more or less a free time for herself still. Wind run once again. Lots of drawing on the map happening. Magnus with the harpoon doesn't quite catch out the faces white his faces white manages to get himself away. Radiance middle tower is under Ranger with the amplified damage rule. Still using the ultimate just to make absolutely sure this mid tower goes down. Fortification has been used to keep the Wind Ranger at bay. And one more burst. No? No, okay. Lil Pleppy does not dare to go for the final folks fire. The mid tier 2 isn't being denied, but that's a good indication that the enemy may be coming in. Magnus' cure allows him to get out of a bit of a hard position, and now the Faces Void has shown himself. Hard L just stepping forward toward. Keeper of the light trying to keep the lane pushing in. As Dragon Knight on the back lines. Not to get engaged on, get some good vision as well. But he is spreading out more, which makes it hard for Claxton to find that ultimate. So it's like team bars are gonna back themselves out. Good positioning from the side of Nightshade, but I don't think it's gonna bring them the game back as they didn't find a Chronosphere there either. But it looks like Nightshade still grouped up, still looking for any kind of kill. And they may just find the Wind Ranger, but Wind Ranger, she turns around onto the Faces Void and... Ares, he just gets deleted. Oh man, I don't think he expected that much Daedalus damage, but that's the nature of the Wind Ranger. And all of her... Insane amount of light stick. Even without the old but she's a viable right kick damage here. And with the double kill for the keeper of the night once again, Luka still trying to somehow fight, but guess what? The BKB ends and so does the blade mail at the most unfortunate timing as Kunka is deleted. 45 to 16, I think the GG is gonna come out soon at this rate, because Faces Void. Radiance middle tower is well, under attack. He will have Radiance a chance in the late game, but he will not get to the late game at this. I mean, Keeper of the Light just shoving out lane after lane, going to work on the mid here to recover so slowly against the Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight with the illusions still trying to defend as best he can with the Dragon Breath. Radiance top tower is under attack. But it looks like Team Bard, they're happy with having everybody contained in the base so they can hunt in case somebody comes out. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Wind Ranger will now go ahead and. Go do some shopping before. Radiant are scanning. For the next tier two tower. <laughs> the while. Nightshade hunting for that good chronosphere once again. Can they land it on the mid as two people are hugging each other? Three people are hugging each other. But they start to spread Just out. Dragon Knight outside. jumps forward, doesn't quite get the connection. If you're not getting the connection. It means a Mirana ult into regroup from the side of Team Bars as Team Bars still not done with their aggression. On the contrary, they are just getting warmed up. Mirana ultimate it is. The Mirana ultimate. Venomans are caught out. Comboed up by the Keeper of the Light. Look at how much damage that one power shot from the Wind Ranger already deals. Keeper of the Light with the right kick will just be securing that kill and out comes a lot of damage onto everybody else while also healing Clip. Not this time though. Void Kronos Fever. It gets completely denied by the Shadow Demon. So yeah, you kept the Wind Ranger at bed for a little while, but that's your Chronosphere. And knowing you've used the Chronosphere with BKB, the Wind Ranger runs and kills the face of Vine for free. Shadow Chance trying to keep the Vayne with two riders from the Wind Ranger will kill him. Vivex from the Void, from the Shadow Shaman. Lil Plep, however. I don't think he wants to stop fighting. He's just gonna wait for his stuff to be ready again. Then try to make a reinitiation. Mirana, meanwhile, leaping into the trees and 
She should be fine escaping as she's still sitting behind her. Maybe not with Raider caught out despite the linkers here. There isn't any answer for her, but the bash from the point already enough of an answer for right now. Out comes the mid run, but no. Kirisko. Kirisko out of all people will be the one who comes with the Fat Wind Ranger. With the Fat Wind Ranger, that arrow will be dying as well. Nice little bonus kill. All the while, face this boy is the pursuit of Hardal. Hardal, though, nothing he can do. And one more high kick is gonna finish him. I crack her with light. And yeah, good turnaround. We're gonna see whether or not it's gonna be enough. I mean, the tier two is still standing, and now the Roshan will be assaulted by the side of Team Nightshade. So with that Aegis, anything can happen, right? Faces White is one of the better Aegis carriers. Roche is now being kinked out by the side of Team Bars, but I think if they go there to try and, con and contest it without the Wind Ranger, they don't stand a chance. Aegis is still going to push out lanes as best he can. But that's going to be the second life on Ares. That's going to allow Ares to do twice as much frontlining because you did see how long he kept the Wind Ranger stunned up in that last fight, right? It took the Shadow D pretty much and the stun combo. It's only going to get worse as the Void gets more attack speed. What is going on? Hayes is making sure he keeps lanes pushed in. He keeps granting his team a huge build advantage. Keeper of the Lord currently saves for the Agatha Scepter to get that really powerful Willow with. It's kind of situational on how you need to hit it, especially against this draft with, well, two ranged heroes you can, who can deal with, especially the Venomans are great anti, you know, any kind of summon hero, because he gets way too good of an attack animation, way too fast of an attack for just the support. Five people running in and are on the chase, but Wind Ranger. Nice to show. Doesn't immediately get jumped on. Instead, it will be Klaxon looking to jump on the Shadow Shaman. Doesn't succeed. Out comes a beautiful two man chronosphere. But Shadow Demon is in it, so he will save the Mirana. Magnus taking low health though, and so is the Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger dead for 95 seconds as Magnus has to run out of there. But guess what? He has sent these skewers the Dragon Knight with him. So Magnus is getting obliterated, as guess what? That's gonna be the bonus kill onto Hardal's Mirana, Keeper of the Light. He realizes he just has to get out. And Team Bars, they need to be very careful with their team fights. Because this is two team fights lost, and they still didn't get the tier 2 tower that they keep trying to assault. Of course, part of the reason for the team fight to have gone so well was Ares just playing the front lines, knowing full well, hey guys, I got an Aegis. As long as that Aegis isn't taken from me, I am absolutely unkillable. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dragon Knight immediately going push mode. 25 more seconds till there's any objection against the Dragon Knight, and even then, Wind Ranger needs to finish that Satanic to truly be able to answer the blade mails that are up on everybody and their cat. Illusion! Void, treating back into the base. All I can give us is a chance. All I can give us. Dyer's God, I love those Mirana top. anime, like the anime voice actress Mirana mm. Ultimate voice lines. They're so fitting. I don't like the skin much. God, are the voice lines good. Only reason to run to like run the anime persona. Dyer's top tower has fallen. An easy target. Bounty, which my matriarch will prize. For the Aegis, 90 seconds remaining. Skunka, he's looking to go Dyer's for a refresh orb at this point. Got a attack. bloodstone, got a blade mail. 
Oh, as a BKB to work with. Nightshade, they are doing a great job attack. as far as adapting their builds go, but Dragonite especially is kind of behind in money. He's top, I know, but compare this to the insane Panda Dragonite we saw in the series before this, who was just, or we saw yesterday as well, who was just free farming and playing that additional carry Dragonite, whereas this DK, despite farming with his Mundestorm, is still happy that he can at least stand in the front lines without being afraid for his life. Nightshade. Trying to use those Manta style illusions to speak out. And Faces Void will be seen for BKB. Shadow Charm putting down an ultimate, forcing any kind of defense here. In comes the Wind Ranger, who will be able to deal with the Serpent Wards really quickly. But Shadow Charm, he did get the Force TP at the cost of no lives that he kind of wanted to get out of the most important. And even a bit of tower damage in. Still gotta play this very carefully, but with the Wind Ranger having at least a basic life skill item, can try to catch somebody off guard and focus fire them down. So that's gonna be exactly the plan, Lil Plan. He finds Filmini and the Faces Void ties them together, forces Filmini to instantly buy back. Everybody still Mirana, ulted up Mirana, throws down some wards, backs off. And they still have the Mirana ult for long enough to try and go in with the next focus fire. As Magnus realizes that's just an illusion, but out comes the Keeper of the Light ultimate. So even more resources being spent by the side of Team Bars, who now need to be very careful because the good Chronosphere could cause them to still lose this game from here on out. Klaxon though, got the RP, but be caught first by the Dragonite. Dragonite now skewered into the enemy triangle, gets one man RP with Ranger, however, orders the wrong Dragonite. And the Keeper of the Light Willow is, will be a huge source of stun lock. But about the Wind Ranger ultimate, where is the damage coming from? Well, not from this Mirana, as she is dead. Step lively now, your Admiral is on board. Down to a 10k gold lead, 14 bars. Who they have been stomping in game number one and for most of this game Dyer's as well. But just look attack. at that giant comeback there. Another comeback like that and GG for Nightshade. But Nightshade, if they lose another fight, it may also be the beginning of the end. But with the win major, the push is always gonna be there. I'll take that. Nightshade, they only have one more. Or tier two tower to deal with Wind Ranger though just goes ahead and punishes Kisco as now the Venomans are caught as well. Both the supports down from the side of Nightshade. Though this is just two supports. That's the thing, Wind Ranger actually has the kind of best amount of damage you can you can get going on any kind of hero folks fire it has an effectively 12 second cooldown as long as wind ranger makes sure to get a kill on the hero presses it on that's gonna 
be the tier 3 tower. Hello, tier 3 tower, says the Wind Ranger with the Focus Fire and the Willow with Dragon Knight. Commander Sun Luden trying to push the back. Fortification has been used as well. And Wind Ranger walks up to the high ground again, continues shooting at the tower. No more tier 3, so no more aura if you're now trying to push this Wind Ranger back. The tower aura are. The tower ores are really important, especially against this big of a physical damage carry who has focus fire up again but isn't gonna press that for just a many rack. Instead, there's the skewer from the mud. Two people out of the three people, but with Rage, even while she gets the BKB out, boy, oh, deals a lot of them before there's finally gonna be the save from the Shadow Demon. Now out comes the wind run, out comes the wave from the Kunga to try and knock the wind rage back, but wind rage is still alive. Codex managed to get himself out of there with the bloodstone and the blade mail, but nobody died. And Nightshade, they invested buyback for this. However, Nightshade, they're now gonna have to defend the top lane as Kisco jumps forward. Press the BKB for that, but they just set up Claxton for a bonus kill as Claxton. Yeah, he gets X marked back straight into the torrent. Nice one. Ares on a killing spree as this face is wide. He's been having a rough start to the game. He's only been slowly been getting up there as far as his damage goes. But 757 means he's finally outputting some good damage output. Well punish people for being out of position. Nightshade. They can try to go for a very fast road and it looks like that's exactly what they're gonna be doing. Bars, do they realize what's happening though? Because this rota it's gonna drop fast, but it will be a free Agonim scepter. Bars smoke three men out of the base. But by the time they ping the road bit in the top lane, it's already too late. Step lively now. Arcane power. Ace this void got the Aegis, so they're hoping to get a pick up with Lil Plat smoking around in, in this really freaking deep. Dyer are scanning. Everyone was out of sight. Ooh, and there it is. Shackle pinning Kunga to a tree line. Kunga manages to cheese himself back to full health. But cheating back to full health doesn't mean jack for the side of Nightshade as they've already lost their Shadow Shaman. And without the Shadow Shaman ultimate, without the lockdown, they don't have the means to counter initiate on the Swind Ranger. But what are you gonna do if you can't hack, if you can't hold down the Wind Ranger, you can't hit her? He's just flying across the map with, Rin, with Wind Run, having a good old time. Bill Plap. Look at that sneaky little positioning from Lil Plap. He knows full well no Kunka means he can go hunting. Comes into the mid lane and starts continuing to work on those heavy ranks. Then Fates Boy tries to jump, but a nice little block keeps the Wind Ranger safe. Look at that. Or this time around they're gonna get as many wrecks off the game, so the mid lane is gonna continuously keep pushing in. And in comes the Keeper of the Light to do some split pushing for his wind range to finally finish that annoying tier 2 that they have been chrono twice now while trying to defend. Make sure that Nightshade can't possibly get back into this game because Nightshade, if they hit another good two or three man chronosphere under that tier 2 tower that's still standing for them on the bottom lane, will still win the team fight. At this point, Faces Void has enough damage and he has an Aegis to go for those more risky Chronospheres. I don't really see there being a lot of stuff stopping them, though he also has a Lincoln Sphere and that is gonna be revealed by the, Link by the Wind Ranger who tried to jump him and his life being saved by Lincolns. But everybody is gonna camp these wards for now. 
I think Team Bar, they know they cannot possibly give up this push against the side of Nightshade as Nightshade simply have too many resources. Nightshade are all smoked up. They will catch no clap, no clap up against the wind run out. Out comes the Mirana on to try and save him. And there is the RP completely waiting the crowd as Fear Little Clap got his own BKB out. Razor Point would still love to run at this win rate against one of the win rate got Life Steel. And win rate only in line for the tank tank Tuka. Little Clap now closed in by the Shadow Shaman Ultimate. While Dragon Knight is doing the work though. And maybe after good initiate Team Bar, they don't kill anyone. So enough resources to continue the fight. Shadow Shaman will be killed off, but that's a Shadow Shaman trade for your one position and your Shadow Demon. The Dragon Knight illusion trying to get a kill. Ares! He loses the Aegis at least. So they get a really big counterplay out of Shadow Demon, sacrificing himself to make one Radiant's more set of Dragon Knight illusions. Holy Keeper of the Light continuing to run, and Philmany has been assassinated by the Magnus. Magnus now has to run away from that one position void, though. And the void is so fat that nope, down goes the Magnus. And down goes Hates well on the Keeper of the Light. Good try from Team Bars, but not good enough. As a matter of fact, this is now going to be only 6,000 gold remaining as a lead for them. They were so far ahead all game, but slowly but surely Nightshade are pulling the game around in their favor. Longer it keeps going, the better it's going to be for them to face this void. He's not quite queuing up the Refresh Orb for the double Chronospheres, but even the amount of work he, do, he does with one Chronosphere is already absolutely insane. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Ares uh, will get the final tier 2 of the Dyer half of the map before the Radiant have done everything to counter that. That's going to be the first of the Dyer's tier 3 as well as it wasn't for the fortifications, but they fortify mostly because they're trying to look for a bonus kill. Void was forced to press the BKB, but with the Void BKB, all of his reinforcements can up and Dragon Knight will get the D-Ward going, which leaves Lil' Clap in a dangerous spot, but Lil' Clap, he makes sure to kill up one support first, goes for the BKB, loads the sword, which is the Venomance ultimate, Venomance, he ends up holding his own team, BKB keeping him safe, face his fight, sticking low, but he will be throwing up Chronosphere as RP comes up once again to top the Chronosphere, Wind Ranger dies though, no buyback, and everybody else on the side of Bars has already used up their buyback. Keeper of the Light, nice escape attempt, but guess what, they tied a few right as he comes out of that Wind Waker. Magnus, he survives thanks to his Blink Dagger and the follow-up Skewer, but guess what, he gets waved right back by the Kuga. And everybody is still hitting the Magnus, while the faces by just slowly but carefully dancing around. Out comes the Shadow Shaman Ultimate. As a buyback from the Mirana is never going to be enough to defend this Nightshade Esports. They managed to tie out the game 1-1. One, one. As they're gonna start going to work on the tier, tier, tier 4 towers. Or are they with the Wind Ranger buying back? Maybe this isn't over as a matter of fact. Team Bars. They need to be so careful now. Lil Pleppy got a tiny chance left of winning this. But it looks like Ares is trying to tie out the series 2-1 to uh, one to one and get this to go to a third game. Ares, nice responses to the Wind Ranger trying to stun him. And Wind Ranger, oh no, this is dieback, GG's. GG's, this is over. Good game, well played, gets called by Hayes. They didn't end in time, it ended up lasting 53 minutes. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we got one final game of the day, because keep in mind, the last series of the day has been cancelled here at the European Pro League, season number 17, division number 2, but we still have one game between Nightshade, Esports and Team Bob.
Five seconds Radiant remaining. Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire Team Ban. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire Team Ban. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the third and final game between Nightshade Esports and Team Bar at the European Pro League Season 17 for today. We're gonna see who takes the cake. As draft number two was really solid, I gotta say, from the side of Nightshade. I wasn't sure the execution was good enough because the Wind Ranger started off by having a really good game, but catching her in two one man chronospheres ended up being enough. And and Nightshade this time around, they're opening up with Pangalier. So trying to have as much team fight as possible. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. And it looks like a tiny Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Side of Team Bars. With a tiny to kind of add burst damage, punish people for being out of position as well as just remaining. add a lot of extra initiation. I really Five like what they're doing remaining. with this kind of draft right now. Tiny against Pangalier though. If the tiny Pangal if the tiny against Pangalier, you know, initiations aren't rewarded because all of the good heroes for team fight combos are banned out, then it's kind of funny because it ends up punishing both of these teams equally right now. They both really like those AoE combos, so that Enigma ban from Nightshade it feels bad to go for it. Same with Team Bars and their Timber Saw ban. They know they didn't want to play against that hero, so they banned it, but they would have really loved to go with the Tiny. And with that, Team Bars, let's see what they're gonna decide on. Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. 
And yeah. finally, it looks like we're coming to a decision with Mirana being picked up by Team Bar. So Team Bars, once again, they want to revolve their draft around those arrow combos, around those really good kill setups, and around the early to mid game by taking themselves a lead. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And with that... Waiting for Nightshade to come up with the next pick, but both teams are already investing tons of reserve time here. Both teams want to make sure they don't fall in the same pitfalls Radiant as they did in game number one or game number two, respectively, as it's gonna be a Venoman to pick up. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. As Nightshade Esports. Bit of reserve time remaining. They also got a Mirana combo to deal Dial with though. So what's Bounty it gonna hunter. be? A Bounty Hunter. Alright, we don't see that hero every day. Once again, it's gonna be high risk, high reward. I'm excited for this. I love to see me some bounty hunter action. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. That, ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for Team Bars who are running low on reserve time to come to a conclusion and it's going to be a Shadow Demon. I wonder which kind of a illusion-based carry they want to pair that with. Probably a melee one because there is a Magnus for lots of empower and lots of very fast farm. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Whereas Nightshade, looking for a pick. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Morphling, all right, all right. So Nightshade Esports, they don't know which enemy carry they have to deal with, so they just go with one of the most well-rounded but fast and aggressive carries. So the idea here is you've got a bounty hunter who prints a ton of money, you got a Morphling who Ten gets six slot extremely really quickly and back. is kind of slow to join the team fights early, but if you just have Morphling come in and kind of help out briefly with lots and lots of damage available, then off the game that way. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Both Slark and the Darks here getting banned. Radiant up. team banned. Seconds remaining. 
Marcy taken Five away. We don't see remaining. Marcy any day every while also being able to escape the Magus combo. You need heroes that can escape that Magus in the skewer setup. Though it's gonna be a Mars, so instead of escaping the skewer setup, they try to counter it with a spear or even better an arena. Interesting enough, it adds a lot of team fight, it adds a lot of catch, but catch, but now Nightshade, they are doubling down on that fast in your face kind of gameplay, which doesn't always get rewarded. Juggernaut. You may now select your heroes. Gonna be a juggernaut for Team Bars. So Team Bars, they say, you know what? You're gonna be aggressive. You're gonna be fast with that Morphling. It's game number three already. Let's end this relatively fast. You know, make it a 25, 35 minute game. Pick up a juggernaut, a really in your face hero who has been extremely strong this patch. And I think people have been underestimating him a ton. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. As Juggernaut, definitely a great hero against Codex. I wonder if it's gonna be the Maelstrom or the Battle Fury Juggernaut, because both varieties of him kind of do see play nowadays. I'm personally more of a fan of the Maelstrom, because magical damage just allows you to speed up the game and get some re. Prepare for battle. Plague our enemies. Folks. They are gonna have some superior vision around the bottom lane, whereas Bars placing their own vision and trying to get their own advantage over on top. Both teams just kind of looking for superiority around the map as far as the wards go. You can't improve until you make mistakes. Each blow sharpens our blade. Cannot get... 30 seconds to battle. Yeah, Juggernaut and Bounty Hunt, two heroes we don't see every day. The question is, which team's more or less comfort hero in the current patch will be paying off for them, because Nightshade, they're on a bit of a timer. That's the drawback of picking a Bounty. It's an amazingly strong hero if you print track gold, which then lets you print more track gold, which guess what? You get more track gold from. Yeah, right? Amazing how that works. Absolutely busted begins. as far as combo goes, although... Regarding the runes, they traded 50. And first, they need to get their bounty hunter to level 6 in the first place. Kisco, we're gonna be watching when he gets his ultimate. It is very important for him to get that up at a decent. Harry's already 
already taking chip damage on that morphing hero of his. Not really the greatest of damage dealers. <laughs> of course, Lenny takes the concern now. Bill Plep, he's messed up once, which could come around to bite him in the ass, because you gotta consider, Bounty Hunter is also continuously stealing away his gold. Though, the farm that they're lacking over on the top lane, Magnus more than makes up for him bottom. Well, I need to chase down Filmini now. Shadow Demon got four stacks on him, and a few more hits, bam, there we go. God, it's satisfying to watch people be sniped by the Shadow Poison. All the Wisdom Runes this time around aren't gonna be contested. There's not gonna be a major brawl for them. A reasonable for them. Slow taking a ton of damage to the face. Blood grenade and an arrow to finish the job. Instantly killed off. Bar now pulling ahead as far as the kills are concerned. They want to be more aggressive with that morphing. Getting the depth of strikes on arrow. Follow up wave for him. One more right tick under the trick for Ares. Isn't too worried about the amount of damage he's gonna take here. As Venomans is gonna live. His illusions may be scary. Nightshade. They make sure to get, his get their carry involved in some of these kills. While the Juggernaut is still behind, Bounty Hunter rotating around with the Invis, looking to set something up. Mirana, not quite the best arrow there. Only he stopped getting a keep with that. Angelier bottles up a shield rune with that shield rune. He can be so cocky with the first Rolling Thunder of the game. Looking for the Mirana follow up. We'll get that. Rolling through for more. Follow up swash buckle onto Haze. There's the stun from the bounty hunter. One more right kick is gonna do it. So I died right after the Pangolier. So Pangolier didn't get any of that track gold. Still a double kill for Filmini, who's now rich and a lot of money. You can't improve it. Out. Until Actually, you make there mistake. is no track yet, but it's almost coming out as well. Bounty hunter just a little bit away from that level six. So I think they're still super happy with that timing. Mars, meanwhile. Holding a point for the ultimate. This Juggernaut. Bounty, which my nature is prize. But he's been lacking as far as, you know, the early game impact goes. With 3 assists, it's not bad. But before level 6, Bounty Hunter is just not the type of hero that does a lot of things because his ultimate literally kills gold. My cat's bothering me, sorry about that. So it's my microphone with strange noises. Anyways, Arrow will be killed up by Ares before Clarkson can defend. on the tiny died mid lane. So a nice little trade going on there. Power rune will go the way of Nightshade as well, who now have a 2k gold lead. Although some of that is track gold, and they're gonna try to make it as much track gold as possible with that bounty hunter now continuously joining the fight. Continues the front lining. Juggernaut in the meanwhile. Almost got the Maelstrom, and he is going Radiant Maelstrom on the cell, which, if, if you ask me, is the far superior build. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. is 
there this time around. And with the arrow, the nuke of Zombie Rana is coming out. Oh, he's left from Dugger as well for added damage. Nirana also trying to escape, but there is Tech on Tiny. Still, nobody's gonna pursue. Ill plan. Now recovering as we switch over to the gold lead. You can see that Morphling is still super far ahead, but Juggernaut is third in that worth. And he is going to try to catch up more and more to the Morph, Dyer's especially once Magnus tried to give him one of those empowers. Kisco continues trying to oh, invade. That lead going and the track is going to onto two or three heroes giving them vision as well. Tangalier is going to use the commit onto Arrow. Arrow will be taking himself up the map to drop the initial rolling thunder, but he's going to get chain stunned for that. Easy track hold, easy life, says the Pangalier, who's now committing onto Haze and with the Venom and ultimate on him. So much for that space, that would be Rana had to stay away. Now she could come in, but nothing more to be done. More track gold gets connected by the side of Nightshade. And this is where that bounty machine gets going. 3000 gold already Dyer's printed. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And Klaxon. Getting a lot of damage. It's tracked up. Getting harassed after harassed. Oh. Trying to spin TP away, but the spin didn't quite cover the TP and in comes Lark with the arena to actually immediately decide to commit for this. Easy carry kill, easy 6,000 gold lead for the side of Nightshade. As it looks like they are stabilizing around Kisco and his ability to just make so much money for the team. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Now he's taking up the map and arrow. Dyer's it's not that much damage though, and as that arrow takes a shuriken to the face. Angelier on the pursuit for more. With the pursuit blade, he already almost got hard out. Guess what? He's tracked up. So he's gonna hit the floor. This bonus gold coming around. Mirana Holt is there as well. Try and deal with Plexon. Plexon. Oh no, he skewered into his team. Expecting them with the Venomance to open it. But Juggernaut still leads to a nice little cleanup of three people dying. So no follow up to punish the half health tiny taking down to Venomancer. from Tiny as well as the Radiant Shadow Demon. Scanning. Radiant are scanning. Again, it's going to reveal the smoke activity and Bounty Hunter, he has to get out of there, as do his teammates. So Bounty Hunter positions himself to break the smoke and he's pinging it out, hey guys, I broke the, sm broke the smoke and in the trees, he's still not visible. So all team bars can do is improve until you make mistakes. Back. Juggernaut in the meanwhile farming up on the bottom lane. That Malcolm is still not farming this morphling anytime soon. You're super rich with how much gold he has already been getting for himself. Tracks. Therefore, the kills nine times. Our spear not quite connecting. And I'm kind of waiting for Morphling to switch into aggro mode, pro honestly, but probably once the Manta start at least, then start joining his team and saves up Dyer's for the Scotty, but Bounty Hunter, he was isolated by a skewer, and with the blink skewer catch, they are instantly going to beat him off the map and force the rest of Nightshade to go back. Wait a little bit longer for Ares to be online until they start doing funky shenanigans again. <coughs> Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Game paused here. Hopefully not for long. Because, yeah, this is kind of a tense game. With Imbar being just three kills behind, but four freaking thousand.
disconnect from the tiny now. Disconnect from Shadow Demon as well, and the Mirana. So it looks like three people are having connection problems. On the side of Team Bar, Tiny already reconnecting. So that's waiting for two more. Or reconnect, only the Mirana left to go. But he is back. Hopefully, lag issues will be resolved now as Nightshade. You they can't have only a 4k lead that mistakes. they desperately need to push out. And you can't improve on. Takes says Gaben. I owe it all to me. No demon looking to save for a blink dagger. All the while, Pangalier. The Agnum Scepter queued up as well as the Mage Stairs. There's the go. We're going to see if this fort old lead can be or for Nightshade. Or whether they're going to have to deal with a late game or not. I kind of need more things for breakfast. I mean, not really. Morphing can always morph into strength and kind of, you know, deal with the initial assault. But it's not like he can really hold his own if Juggernaut gets a skull basher. Just such a big. Radiant's almost any ranged hero. Under attack. Grana. Hold off by the Mars Arena. Tiny blinking out. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Juggernaut. Q1. Trying to get that Manta Star is going. Radiant's bottom tower is Comes the RP from Magnus to try and set up a good Omni Step. The Omni Step was good enough from Lil Trap. Lil Plep to now be able to just teleport himself out. The healing ward still on the run, and guess what? While that was happening, Venomancer also died on the other half of the map, where he left the tiny with an ultimate for bursting him down. But Nightshade ended up giving up two valuable kills as Juggernaut. 300 gold away from the Manta Cell. Which is gonna allow him to keep up in regards to farm and kind of just and make sure Nightshade are for the double damage. Here, not having a good time farming towards that Agnum Scepter office though. Now that they stopped making track kills, now that they stopped Radiant hunting with the bounty hunter, the game is kind of looking one sided and. Nightshade. Morphling gets arrow trying to morph and one more right pick is going to lead to the most valuable one position from the side of Nightshade dying. And now Lil Plat has been tracked up, is being pursued, is being looked at and the arrow can it land on more? No, not quite. But there is the cleanup still coming in as Filmini will be taken down and Bounty Hunter running for his life. Crisco. Not making it out against Hayes, who the tiny avalanche toss combo has just way too much burst damage Dyer's built into his toolkit.
Stay silent and move quickly. Rana ultimate out. Nice so far. Nineteen bars to go for a wrap around. Kisco has been trying to spot him out, but with with the smoke they know he's nearby. He runs himself up to the high ground, will be safe. All the while, Juggernaut just sending out Luna to push out lanes now. While the real Jugger, together with Magnus, will be getting himself a Mirana shard. Mirana, meanwhile, Venomance holds that and with the track, that's gonna be some extra gold once again swinging around. Not many people nearby. But every bit of cash count, but it was almost a thousand. So night shade with their lead. Morphling changed his mind and got the Kanda queued up now. From the Aghanim Scepter, that is gonna make him significantly scarier as he can just jump on top of people. Uh, kills are exactly equal. This is how the Bounty Hunter Draft likes to play, but all they need is one good team fight in order to get that snowball rolling again. Once again, be the force of nature that I'd love to be here. What's up? Which can save his life though. If you already have a bounty hunter, it always feels kind of bad building items like Glimmer Cape. Because you all know tower. that the enemy is probably attack. gonna be carrying dust for the bounty already. And that makes it significantly worse for saving carries. But Nightshade, they realize that Team Bars are just trying to avoid any kind of confrontation. Team Bars don't want to fight, knowing full well that they end up just giving up track gold. So, Nightshade ended up going into Roshan. Bars perfectly scouted out. Their four man smoke behind this juggernaut, who's running near the road, but trying to tank initiation. But Bounty found the real juggernaut. And juggernaut runs in, Morphling already picked up the Aegis. And that is second life for Nightshade Esports. And there's Squishy Carry. Magnus goes for an uh, ultimate setup, a good Omni Slash. Mars yeah, gets ignored by the Juggernaut spin, but Lil Seth, you're still in trouble, my friend, or is he? Gets the Omni Slash out, but who's healing ward dead? Juggernaut will be killed eventually as well. The follow up kill gets made by Ares, who still has his own Juggernaut healing ward. Well, as that Aegis arrow got killed all the way back near the tier 2 tower, well, Hayes. Looks to be making a getaway here, but that is just one surviving. And once again, Nightshade Esports took a ton of track gold. Look at that, 3,000 something gold in one team fight, which would be huge. And it would be a holy crap, how did they do that? Except this game, you know, Nightshade got their bounty under going on. Nightshade have a Morphling who's just one of the most snowbody heroes yeah, in the game. And of course, time. that's Thunder the whole combination attack. that they've been Thunder going for since minute one of this. Time. As the tower yeah, start crumbling quite a bunch eventually. Morphling. Quite a good tower hit, especially if he has a Mars helping him out a little. And that's gonna be one lane taken care of, utilizing that Aegis from Night Maid. Juggernaut, he is scary, but the last fight he uses, he uses ultimate without the Omni Slash. He's only half a hero, really. Hunter. Not to get a catch onto anybody. Irana is their desired target and Morphling with the Slackery. We're going to get burst down once as Bounty Hunter. Trying to just be a nuisance about it. 
but they've lost the Aegis without getting anything out of that. Well, they came so close to securing a kill. We're on bottom lane, however. Claxton is pushing and is just farming up with the power. Can't leave Magnus to free farm too much. Magnus will blink away from him, but will get taken with the arena from Mars. That's gonna be some track gold, or is it as Claxton? Got a nice turnaround ultimate. It's gonna be the Mirana ulti, which does nothing because he's cracked up. And now Morphling comes in, make sure he gets himself a little bit of extra gold. And that's gonna be the crit for the Virgis. Little does Morphling know that he's surrounded, and it is more strength and survive as his team comes in to lift the damage out, but Shadow Demon not really doing anything to the Morphling as Morphling able to tank through all of that. He can now go back into more agility while hitting some creeps to life steal up. We're just swapping back for now. But yeah, I think this Morphling exactly. He'd like to stay into full agility as much as possible and kind of rely on his lifesteal. Because that strike hits so freaking hard and... He gets that Kanda in. Where he goes the next time. He can blow people the hell up. He has got to do almost twice as much damage. It's ridiculous how good that thing is right when you get it this early on. Yeah, that's over 250 damage per right kick for this Morphling. As Shadow Demon, fought by the Venomance ultimate, killed off with the Venomance ultimate. Mirana still on the way out, but she is tracked. She is getting killed off. 10k gold lead, just from all of that track gold being generated. Radiant's top tower is under attack. It. Year 2 will be destroyed by just a lot of push. Mars tries to go for an arena, but Juggernaut spin TPs out just a little bit too fast for Morphling to take care of that whole issue with Skanda. Looking to go for an Eye of Skadi next, as Ares eats all in agility. He still has 1,400 health, which I know isn't that much for a fat carry. Compare that to the Juggernaut 2.1k. But with the Skadi, he will be so... Because he tanky that he's just impossible to take down for the Juggernaut. That's the timing of that. Mars just threat. They're already looking to go for the Skull Basher. Try and contain the Morphling to try and contain whatever the enemy can throw at them. It's gonna be a lot, let me assure you that much, ladies and gentlemen. Out comes a three-man smoke from the side of Nightshade. He turns around onto the Venomancer, gets him with the slam dunk combo. Venomancer is in the face of Override for some time. He is going to do the trick, but out comes the RP onto the two. Juggernaut going for a good Omni Slash, though it doesn't lead to any kills. And with the Stony Healing Ward, Morphling is immediately making sure his team kills back up again. As Morphling secures the Juggernaut kill, secures even more track gold. 70 seconds, no Juggernaut. The Mirana arrow isn't gonna connect. Mirana still trying to get out of there, but I think they saw her. Yeah, no teleports for you, man. Bam, killed off. Two for nothing. Only one tier two tower is still standing, and Morphe, guess what? He's hunting on the mid lane already for that bonus kill in the shape of a Magnus. Doesn't quite get him as his Juggernaut time is over. But well played from Ares there. He's almost overtaking the Juggernaut in terms of net worth and turning into an absolute beast as this connect comes out and that is gonna be another one dying. Such an awkward timing for a disconnect because it's the last game of the day and it's a very closely looking one.
Connect coming in from the Bounty Hunter and it looks like everybody is ready to go once more. Ready is being asked by Venno. Because it's coming out. Shadow Demon isolating the more, trying to be a nuisance, but Morphling, I think he really wants this tier 3 enough to commit for it. Look at the damage, look at the power just melt. Morphling will be caught by the Magnus, but there is the counter initiation track kill. Magnus instantly blown up, now Morphling unafraid to go for more, wanted to catch somebody with the Shadow Demon. Back and focus on wetting down this tower, but that is gonna be a tier 3 tower, that is gonna be the many racks melting like warm butter next. Fortification use more fling. He is gonna catch somebody this time around with the shadow demon. Being a nuisance as that's gonna be the many racks morphing. He got what he came for. A little plan has a healing word cut. Keep morphing at bait. Look at how much damage it took there. As morph gets the rags, gets to walk away, managed to dodge the arrow successfully. 17k gold lead. Everyone on Nightshade is immediately gonna pick themselves up. I think they may want to do a Roche before going for the final push. Or just wait out the morphling Scotty. Like, you need to more wait out the morphling Scotty before you go for the final push. If you get the Roche, it's just a nice little bonus. How about that? Or a man smoke comes out from the side of bar who are realizing hey the enemy is probably going for the next road. But they're not there yet. Radiant are scanning. And everybody is walking around the scan perfectly here actually. Roshan can only respawn in one from now as it's gonna be a super short respawn timer. Definitely favoring Team Nightshade. Seems like after being kind of down on their luck with the first game's Rose respawn this time around. It's all in their favor. They're gonna smoke up, they're gonna look for the first kill before the Rose and bam, that's one, that's two. Both of them track kills. So honestly, I think they don't even want to Rose anymore. Gonna send one back. They're gonna send more people back actually to bring with them the creeps. Make sure that Wave is gonna push in again. Just more fling already running down the bot lane and has his eyes set on the next tier 3 tower. Also has his eyes set on the satanic just to make sure he gets that extra damage to lie steel to work with. And Tormentor. Boom, down it goes. Codex. Check with that chart as being able to spear multiple people is great. And now that Roshan has respawned, they will be scouting it out. All the space in the world to do it with. Nightshade, they just need to make sure. They are not gonna mess this up against the RP, and the game should be in the back. Just look at how fast that Roshan is falling. Giving them the banner. This fast waveform is gonna finish the job. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is falling. Shadows, take us. I need going for a moonlight shadow, but no! Oh no! Three pissed with that. Tiny is still trying to get out. BKB, yeah, but they don't have any BKB fears and stun, so he will be getting himself away. Pangalier had a skull basher, but it didn't proc. Gonna make sure to protect that banner as the final tier two of the game. Done by Nightshade pretty fast. We approach 53 minutes. The longer this game is going on, Radiant the better it's gonna get for a bargain. Because Morphling is already almost six on it. At a certain point, he can't get that much stronger. And at a certain point, he's also going to die against Skulba. Skulba from the Juggernaut. But Juggernaut is delaying his basher. For an Eye of Scott, he wants to make sure the healing of Morphling's strength is taken out first. Dyer's top First tower tier two fallen. tower has been taken while the final one is destroyed on the side of Bar. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Arrow. Nice little 
Escape from the track. He's gonna make as much space as he can with going down, and an arrow will connect with the Mirana as well. But guess what? That's the Mars ultimate, and that's gonna be the top tier three melting to the morphing with ease as Codex has got Desolator to boost up morphing damage even more onto the buildings. That's gonna be a range track taken like it's nothing. Many wrecks as well. One lane of wrecks to go for the side of Nightshade. But wait, they can't. Massive. They got Texan all the way bottom, slip pushing Maglis. It's gonna buy back to try and set up a good fight here. Morphing got arrowed, but the morphing. He is so tanky, maybe not with the RP. Still chain stunned up, but little way for him out of there. Burning into the tiny, going for a good avalanche. Morphing back into agility a little. His Mars will be killed off with Ares. Waltz in, trying to look for more with an egg is still available. He decides not to try to suicide himself. That, see how much more chaos he can cause. It's morphing. Borderline unkillable. Morphing gradually into agility. The arrow is gonna miss both the morphing and the other is morphing. Takes down arrow. And now looks for more in Hardell. Hardell able to get out, but morphing turns into the juggernaut. Gets that eating ward. Can now afford to go back into his squishy agility state where. He still has an easy time man fighting. Kills the real healing ward from the Juggernaut. Morphing. He dies once, but does he care? Because he still has an Aegis. The question is, can they set up the perfect toss in the fountain? Yes, they can with the arrow. Oof, that is an embarrassing death for the side of Nightshade. 80 seconds, no carry, because he came in a little bit too close to the fountain. You broke my fall perfectly, says the Pangalier, who's kind of making fun of his carry, understandably so. Though I think with a 22k gold lead and a borderline 6 slotted morph, this game is gonna be about over in not very long time. Tiny. Gets taken low by the Venom and gets taken low with Smyrna's ultimate. There's a real potential spray there. Out comes the Mars Arena to lock him in place. Kill him off. Another track kill, even without the Morphling. That's kind of scary when you kill the enemy's carry in the fountain and it's still not enough. And as soon as the bounty hunter is back again, they are trying to run people down. Dragonheart looking to split push. And he will be teleporting himself out. But he also inked up. Also, I love the bounty hunter basher. This is such a heads up build from Kisco. Add even more random stunts to the mix, so if you get lucky, you can absolutely annihilate your opponents. Radiant or scanning? Precious bounty. Four K gold lead for the bounty hunter team. No road for quite a while, though. But I think they want to try and end the game before Roshan comes back up again. Tower. It's just getting chipped down by Manta Star Illusions for now. Everybody is alive, and Nightshade don't really want to initiate two head first, even with their humongous gold advantage. Though I don't think they know just how bad their gold, how big their gold advantage really is. So yeah. Going in this, looking to hunt for more. Can they set something up? Mirana caught off guard, and that's gonna be the Mirana. Mars all the up. I trust yes. It's gonna be Codex dying. It's gonna be Kiss dying next to Lil Clap. 
the BKB starts to go there from Bar. Bar trying to turn around. Aries swapped into the Juggernaut. The only one who's died yet is the Mirana, but the Tangler is still looking for more and will find the Bone Coast Shadow Demon already exhausted all of his spells. Morphling will be jumping on top of Haze and with the big Morphling crits, he doesn't stand a chance. No buybacks left on the side of Bar, whereas Team Nightshade still Zion's looking to go jump. for this Zion's final attack. lane of Rex for the Mega Creep, but with that for the GG. The tower, it is melting to the Morphling relatively fast. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And with the tower melting, the Rex Dyer's are the next big objective. Mega creeps for the side of Nightshade as Nightshade. Looks like they're gonna be able to close out this game. Nothing touches the heart like my venom. Aren't quite gonna go all in instead. They're gonna back off. They're gonna farm a little bit more of the morphling for that final item for the all-important butterfly. And then go for Roshan. Try and end the game for good. Mega Creeps pushing in. Bar, they're gonna have a hard time defending this. It looks like Nightshade already giving the call to group up. Giving the call to get them in this triangle where somebody has got to show and it will be Lil Flap, Lil Flap. Need to got Tangalier sitting on him, but Tangalier instead turns onto Arrow. And the Venomancer ultimately will connect onto the Juggernaut. He gets taken quite low and Morphling will destroy him. Claxon will get destroyed from the side of that team fight. Juggernaut buying back, but the Juggernaut buying back isn't helping much. As Tiny dragged up his invisible saving it from this overpowered Morphling. Morphling still spinning, still hitting people. But GPG already been called. And yeah, that's the thing. I love the Juggernaut pick. But if Morphling turns into Juggernaut, gets a free heat. Ward gets a free BKB basically by just spinning and being able to right pick as well, then it's gonna be an easy victory for Nightshade Esports. I'll be a real team bar. They made it hard for them, they made them work for it with the bounty hunter, tried to pick an aggro juggernaut, but they didn't get the aggression in the laning stage that they were looking for, and it ended up costing them the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, the Team Havu game for today has been cancelled as Tony's five friends have withdrawn from the tournament. So with that we are finished and I do thank you all for watching the European Pro League Season 17 Division Number 2 brought to you by Cyrusgore as Nightshade Esports and the final series of the day in a 2-1 for them.